Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make marshmallow frosting. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched and perfected recipe. Today we are making a homemade marshmallow frosting. This can also double as a marshmallow fluff. I highly recommend you make yourself a batch because I have a recipe coming up shortly that is going to be using it. I think you're going to love it. Let's go ahead and get started by preparing a double boiler. Now for today's recipe, I'm going to be using the metal mixing bowl that fits on my KitchenAid stand mixer. This is going to be perfect because once I'm done cooking my marshmallow mixture, I'm going to need to pop it over onto my stand mixer and mix it there. So we're just going to make things easier and cut out the extra bowl. Now to make our double boiler, you're going to need a medium sized saucepan, one that the mixing bowl can fit nicely in. You're going to want to fill this saucepan with about an inch and a half to two inches of water. What you want is enough water that you're going to be able to bring it to a simmer. But if you set your mixing bowl in here, it's not going to touch the bottom. So I don't want the bottom to be getting wet after I've dipped it in the bowl. All right, now another note about this mixing bowl. It is very important that it be completely clean, completely dry, and completely grease-free. A mixing bowl that is not completely clean, dry, or grease-free can keep our egg whites and our marshmallow mixture from whipping properly to those thick, full peaks and that thick volume that we're looking for here today. We're also going to need four large egg whites. Now, I recommend breaking your eggs in a separate bowl, and the easiest way to separate the yolks from the whites is to just crack that egg and then pass the yolk back and forth until the white falls out and then we can add that to our mixing bowl. You can either discard the yolks or you can save them to use in a, in a different recipe that just uses egg yolks. I'll try to remember to link to a couple of those in the recipe notes. Now, another note is if you do end up getting any egg yolk in with egg white, you're going to have to toss that egg white out because a little bit of egg yolk can actually weigh down the mixture as well and keep us from getting the proper consistency that we're looking for in today's recipe. Now in this mixing bowl, we're going to add 3 fourths cup of granulated sugar, 2 thirds cup of light corn syrup. Please note this is not the same thing as high fructose corn syrup. All right, we have our sugar, our corn syrup, and our egg whites. We're also going to be adding 1 fourth teaspoon of cream of tartar, which is going to help stabilize this frosting. And just a pinch of salt. This is an eighth tablespoon of table salt. Now whisk everything together until it's nicely combined. And then we'll head over to our stovetop. Now I have my saucepan here on the stovetop and I'm just going to bring this to a simmer. So you don't want a full boil, you just want a nice simmer. Once that's simmering, we'll take our mixing bowl and we'll set that neatly right into the saucepan. And we are at this point going to whisk constantly. Now we're just going to keep on whisking until our sugar has completely dissolved. If you notice there's a lot of sugar on the edge of your bowl, you can grab yourself a spatula and just use that to scrape those sugar crystals down into the bowl. Now I'm just stirring constantly and once it seems like my sugar has completely dissolved, I like to do this little test where I take a little bit of the syrup and I just rub it between my fingers. I wanna make sure that I'm not feeling any sugar granules. If I can still feel the sugar in there, it needs to cook longer. Another way that you can test that it's done is you can use an instant read thermometer and you wanna make sure that the mixture reaches at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This also ensures that the eggs are properly cooked and you're not going to get sick from them. All right, at this point, my sugar's melted. I've been whisking constantly and we are above 160 degrees. So I can go ahead and take this out of the saucepan and you're your bowl shouldn't be touching the water at all, but do be careful just in case it's dripping at all. You don't wanna drip any of that hot water on yourself. Now, since we mix everything together in our mixing bowl, we can go ahead and pop this right on our stand mixer. Now I have my stand mixer here, and as you can see today, I have fitted this with the whisk attachment, which is the best tool for today's job. You could absolutely whisk this marshmallow frosting by hand, using an electric mixer, that is, but it is going to take a lot of time and it's just gonna be an arm workout, so just keep that in mind. And we can go ahead and we are going to slowly increase the mixer speed to medium high. Now we're just going to let everything mix for about five to 10 minutes or until the mixture is, is very much increased in volume. It should be thick and glossy and it should have stiff peaks if you lift the whisk out of it. We'll take a look at that in just a second. All right, this has been about six minutes, so we'll go ahead and take a look. And right away, you can see that this is super thick. Let's take a look at that whisk. The marshmallow is really thick. It's not drooping. It's holding its shape. It's nice and fluffy. This is the perfect consistency. If yours isn't looking like this at this point, go ahead and keep on whipping. All right, so since mine is looking good, I am now going to add some vanilla extract, which is going to give this a really nice vanilla marshmallow flavor. This is one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And we're just going to whisk everything together again until that vanilla is completely combined. 
All right, now this marshmallow frosting or marshmallow fluff is ready to use. You can use it to ice a cake. Today I'm going to be showing you how I pipe it on cupcakes. I have some in a piping bag here and I just have mini cupcakes today, but we'll go ahead and pipe that on there. And since this is a marshmallow frosting, you can absolutely toast it. Um, if you have a culinary torch, I like to just use a little bit of heat, apply that flame to the marshmallow, and it'll be nice and toasty looking. And of course, you don't have to just use this as a frosting. It also makes a great filling, or it can be used any place where you would typically use marshmallow fluff. And as I mentioned earlier, stay tuned because I have a great recipe coming up later this week that uses today's recipe for marshmallow fluff. And that is how you make marshmallow frosting. I hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. And if you tried this one out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna use a fork so you guys can see how nice and thick this is. It's a little firm on top before we toasted it. Look at that. You're not gonna find anything this good in the store.